in mathematics. This great logarithm is a general term, but in cryptography it is commonly known as discrete logarithm problems. No efficient general method for computing discrete logarithm on conventional computers is known. Several important algorithms in public key cryptography implement the discrete logarithm in their algorithm. They base the security on the assumption that discrete logarithm problems with carefully chosen groups have no efficient solution. Thus, this makes the cryptography either very secure or almost impossible to crush. So, discrete logarithms are logarithms defined with regard to multiplicative cyclic groups. If capital G is a multiplicative cyclic group and small g is a generator of a capital G, then from the definition of the cyclic groups, we know every element small h in the capital G can be written as a small g power of x. Okay, discrete logs are like continuous logs but over a discrete group. Here's an example of a normal continuous log. We have a to the power of x equals to b, where x equals to log a b. All right. For discrete algorithm, it's a little bit different. We have again a x equals to b modulus n. Then x is equivalent to the discrete log of base A modulus N B where B will be the remainder. Let's have an example. Let's say we have 3 to the power of X equals to 6 modulus 7. Alright, where you have to find X. Now X is equals to the discrete log of base 3 modulus 7 6. Okay, now what we need to do here is to find 3 to the power of something modulus 7 and it will give you 6. So, 3 to the power of something, alright, modulus 7 and you get 6. Alright, for shortcut sake, the answer is x equals to 3. Alright, 3 to the power of 3 is 27. 27 mod 7 and you'll get 6. People believe discrete logarithm to be hard because many people have tried to find ways to solve it, but none in a polyminal time. The fastest and currently only known solution is in exponential time, which is to try every possible power until they find the answer. For large numbers, it will take a very long time to find the answer. Given the number is large enough, you'll never be able to find the answer with discrete logarithm. No known algorithms are currently available that can solve it, solve discrete logarithm in a reasonable time. As such, discrete logarithm is used as a security feature. So we're now going to look at the discrete logarithm of the second group. The second group is a group that is generated by a single element. And that is, it consists of a set of elements with a single invertible associative operation and it contains an element of G. Each element can be written as a power of G. Here is a simple example of the cyclic group. We set the Z as a symbol and the star here is mean that there is no zero. So that we will start from 1 here. And the formula to getting the number of the element is N minus 1. So the n here will refer to the 11 here. So it is 11 minus 1 equal to 10. So we know that the number of elements is 10. So it's here. So we assume the a of 1 equal to 3. So the a power of 2, we know that that is the 9. Then a power of 3 will equal to 27. Here is the problem. The 27 is exit the limit of the element, so we need to modulus by n, which is the 11 here. So the answer will be the 5. So we continue the a of 4. We can use the shortcut like a about 3 times 
a power 1 equal to 5 times 3 equal to 15 and 15 also need to mod 11 so answer equal to 4 and the a power 5 equal to a power 4 times a power 1 so equal to 4 times 3 equal to 12 so 12 mod by 11 or equal to 1 so a power 6 or equal to a power 5 times a power 1 which is 1 times 3 equal to 3 a power 7 is 3 times 3 equal to 9 so a power 8 equal to 9 times 3 equal to 27 that's it. as it the limit again so we need to mod by 11 which is 5 and a power 9 equal to 5 times 3 15 modulus by 11 or equal to 4 and a power 10 or equal to 4 times 3 here so it's 12 12 modulus by 11 or equal to 1 so now we can observe that there's a repeating pattern from here to here from here to here so so the the answer of 39541 is repeated after the power of 5 so you can see that 39541 is here again we look at the all the power of 3 we can only reach 5 number which is 3 9 5 4 and 1 so its property of the number of 3 has a special number which is the order of 3 or equal to 5 what can we conclude is that the answer will be repeated every 5 power so that this is the loop of this cyclic group so now we'll be looking into the primitive roots of discrete logarithm the purpose of using or looking for the primitive root of this logarithm is actually to improve the security where the answers computed from it should be always unique as you can see a unique exponent which is also the primitive root will produce distinct answers after we move the number with p we'll have an example after this Alright, so given this formula, I believe you, you are friendly with this because my friend has presented to you. So we can see that primitive roots, they actually mean no matter what power it gives, for example here, a power to 1, a power to 2, up to a power minus 1, if they produce distinct outputs or values, we can conclude that it is the unique exponent and also a is actually the primitive root of prime p so guys let us take a look of an example here so now we'll be taking an example of a power to the i mod a number where we will use 7 here which is also a prime number uh, to produce some answers for us to compare to see which of them are actually the primitive roots Alright, so we will compute them as a table as you can see over here. A power to the uh, sorry, a power to one and we will create some numbers here up to seven because it's not seven, right? So six. And now we are going to increase the power to a power two, a to the power of three, and so on a to the power of 5 to the power of 6 and of course you can have more over here but I will explain later uh, what actually is this right so now as we can see that a power to uh, a power to 1 and over here there are some numbers here and after the vote 7 you will exactly get the same answers of right like uh, like over here so there is no there is nothing wrong here so we proceed to the a power 2 where after for every power for number 1 
no matter how how big the power is, the answer is always one. So for for each answer, which means it's one, after we mode seven, it should be one as well, right? So nothing wrong over here. So we proceed to the number two. So for example, over here, two to the power of two is four. So four mode seven, we will know that it's actually four. Alright, so proceed to number 3 and we can see that it's actually 2 power of 3 is 8 so 8 mode 7 is 1 and 2 power of 4 is 16 and 16 mode 7 is actually 2 and we just proceed to do until the end of the table I mean to complete the table alright so I forgot my answer, so I'll just write all the answers over here to save our time. Alright, so we've got the table over here. So let's differentiate them a little bit. Okay. So, from all the answers here, since what we mentioned just now, the answers should be unique, right? The answer should be unique where a to the power of 1, a to the power of 2, until a to the power of p minus 1 should always be different. If you still remember the, remember the condition. So we will now check which of the answers here, they are actually different. So we will call that the primitive roots of a with uh, to the prime uh, to the prime of seven. So we will check one by one to see which answers are primitive roots. So this is definitely not. And one more condition is that they should know uh, repeating numbers uh, computed from the row over here. So for example, 2, 4, 1, 2, 4, 1. So this is actually repeating the, the first answer over here. So we cannot take this as our primitive root. So for number 3, 8, uh, 8 to the power of 1 until 8 to the power of 6. As we can see, all the outputs or the, or the values computed, they are different. So in this case, we can conclude that they are actually the primitive root we are looking for. So and of course, the primitive roots can be more than one. So we will see the, the next three compute, computed values to see whether they are primitive roots. So for number four, yeah, they are repeated, so it's not. Number five, okay, so yes, number five is it is a primitive root for this example. And obviously number 6, it is not, so we can take it up. So over here, we can conclude them that um, number 3, value 3 and 5, they are the primitive root we are looking for in this example. And of course, after this, no matter which power you use, uh, which means if you increase the power to 7, 8, 9, and 10, you will see the pattern uh, will be always repeating. Right? And that's what we meant by the cyclic group uh, in the previous topic my friends have told you. Right? Alright guys, so over here we have another example where we actually use the modular 19 as you can see over here. And uh, we do as what we did just now, computing all the values, and we will get different answers over here. And actually, you can see for number 2, 3, 10, 13, 15, uh, 14, and 15, they are the primitive roots respectively for this modular 19. Alright, so for a bigger number, you can have a more difficult computation of the values so it can be even more secure all right algorithms for computing discrete logarithms 
There are two algorithms for computing discrete logarithms which work for the arbitrary group. The first one is known as the baby step gen step method, while the second one is the perlick hellman algorithm. The baby step gen step method. It is a mid in the middle procedure that exploits an idea similar to the birthday paradox used by Pollard's row algorithm. The reason for the name of the algorithm is that the computations for the first list are the baby steps, where each step increases the exponent of a by 1, while the computations for the second list are the giant steps, where each step decreases the exponent of a by n. The second one is the perlick hellman algorithm. It is something similar to Perlick's row algorithm. As with the Perlick's p-1 algorithm, the idea behind perlick hellman algorithm is that if p-1 only has small prime divisors, then we can evaluate all of the ingredients in the computation rapidly. 